Indy cannot call how this one is going to go. So let's let's have a quick look at the maps and see if that gives us any more information, gentlemen. Yeah, look out for a Regret Slayer in this lineup, and there it is in game number five. So that's already a win for Vexed Ebuyer. They haven't looked as strong as they did with Cristola on this lineup, but first game is going to be Strongholds on the rig. We saw earlier on on Strongholds-based game types for Soaring, they seem to be a little bit off the pace in terms of their communication. So very important they're all on the same page in this game number one. Otherwise, Vexed, they're going to be steaming into a very early lead. And it's going to be interesting as well because game three and game four I basically see Soren written all over it because how quick they Good beat point, Maestro yeah. in three minutes and 40 seconds on the 3-0 on the CTF on Fathom and when you've got these strongholds on Eden as you said the French never lose on that game top at all and the first two is going to be 50-50 so we'll have to see how it progresses well let's get into it ladies and gentlemen the game is starting in the background it's our grand finals of the third week of the European 2Ks as part of the Halo World Championships 2018 strongholds the rig is going to be our first game of the finals camouflage of course going to be so, so important as we've seen already in some of the games we've had today. Scattershot glistening in a way there. We're starting this one off with the man that we've known to have big games, but also known that he has to step his own game up from a personal perspective, it's going to be Lunny. So to start the game, Quadios grabs the Railgun. Snipe does get away with the camouflage off our screen. Right now we're seeing Lunny take down Cristola. So really big win at the start of the game for Vex. Snipe Drone getting away with that camouflage early on, which is usually burned, is a very big win for them. He has just gone down low, but also alongside that, Quadios with the first Railgun in the game. They did take down Fragger, who had the scatter shot, but no doubt someone from Touring is going to redeem that one. And early on, scoring goes in favor off of Soaring, and look, SLG with a double right there. Three down now for Vex. Lunny lost a life, does get a crucial kill on Cristola, but all the while, the basement's being contested. That's a reset, that's a triple cap. Yeah, triple cap in effect early on, and this is the momentum they needed at the start of this one. Fragger and the boys, oh, look at this flank coming in. Quadios, absolutely clueless that player was behind him. Riots gets taken down as well. A perfect collapse coming in here uh -oh. from the guys on Soaring, and we talk about communication, how important that is, and they're showing signs that they really are coming to life, because Collapsing on a base like that oh, so oh nicely as wow. Fragger picks up another perfect kill is a perfect indication that things are starting to click. Yeah, Fragger is so nice right now. I, I mean, we have SLG with Railgun Scattershot, but I just can't switch off this man's POV. He's had such a superstar of a performance in this 2K. It was Batchford last week. This week it's definitely Fragger on Soaring. He's had such a great tournament and he seems to be continuing it here with that early triple cap for his team. Vital 1v1 wins versus Lunny, who Seems to perfect the world whenever it were on his POV as well, but also these flanks on BR base. He will go down here and surrender the BR base, but that should give enough time for his team across the map to try and get in more advantageous positions and try and find Lunny, who has that railgun on the map right now. Cristola will get that kill, but Lunny still with his rail in his hands. Soaring, you have to worry about him. A brand new rail is coming up on the map in two seconds as well. So look for teams to fight around that area. And we always had a huge question mark on Fragger. We always thought they actually make the team far worse, but my God, we were so wrong in comparison. And the thing is, Vex are also making some big mistakes as well. They know Fragger's always hanging around Engine 2 and Whitehall. They know they've got that control, but for some reason, they're just going straight for BR base every time and not even trying to clear up the kills beforehand. So some big mistakes by Vex on their behalf as well. Yeah, mistakes coming in. At this point, they're already found themselves down by half by, by sorry half the points in the game have already disappeared 44 to 10 the score slg pushing the pace here on to snipe drone as well picks up another kill here and look at this at the moment they're just trying to defend the strongholds that they have and with slg cleaning up those kills he's going to be pushing again this triple cap it looks like the basement will go into the control of Vex momentarily, but just as they turn that one over, Snipe Drone's going to be taken down to no shields, and the guys on Soren are going to turn the nest over. Yeah, I believe Lunny has the camouflage here as well, so he's going to be a player to look out for. An individual performance from Lunny right here would certainly help them get back into this game. They are not scoring at the moment, 54 to 12. You have to say, with that camouflage completely ticked out, a big performance from Lunny is what you're looking for. Oh, Cristola! Seems like two weeks ago, we would have seen a perfect out of Lunny right there, but Cristola has his number that time round. Snakey with a railgun in his back pocket. I think that is all out of ammo, though. Fragger also has a scatter shot. He's going to have ammo in that one. So two players you have to watch out here for if you are vexed, e buyer. Look out for those two power weapon players, one of which has just gone down in the hands of Fragger. Yeah, and I like this from Snakey. Sometimes you'll see a player try and push out 
that back rail before dropping it into this basement, but recognized that his teammate SLG was already spawning Carbine in open field. So he has that angle covered. Snakey gonna capture that basement and pick up a kill at the same time. Cristola on the flank here, takes out Riots there with the perfect kill. So you're gonna see his teammate as well trying to pressure a triple cap, and you're gonna see it again now. Snipe drones on his own on the Carbine. Oh. Anything, even a trade here is perfect for the guys on Sorin because they have all of the players, as you can see on the outlines, now spawning towards that bunker, which means they can once again just collapse it. Oh, I swapped over to where SLG right there because the E1 flank has been so, so good for soaring so far this game. Frag has picked up the new railgun. You can see that being put into effect in the kill feed, but that E1 flank is something that Riots has made an adjustment to. We saw the ground pound come in on SLG when we swapped to his POV. Riots obviously is saying, hey, we've been flanked E1 before. We know they like to do this. Let me just make sure no one's flanking that area. That time around, it was SLG caught off guard and he goes down. I just can't believe Sorin's presence at the moment. Even with three of them going nest and just helping each other oh, try and wow. get this point, it just seems like they're giving Fix absolutely no room to breathe. Even though they did beat Infuse, I didn't think at all that they'd be beating Vex in this state of mind. They're with a trip cap now. It looks like they're just trying to finish off the job. Not only that, Quadios was pretty much on his own trying to capture that stronghold in the base where you see so many players just split across the map here for the guys on Vex, but somehow they are picking up kills. You're going to see Snipe Drone move towards his basement, finish off that cap with his teammate Quadios here, and they do have now control of the Railgun and the Scattershot, so this is a real opportunity to get back into the game for Vex. One more mistake, I feel, and this game's over. I love the fundamental Halo being played from Soaring right now. They all... Well, half the team speaks different languages, but I mean, right now they both understand that taking control of Whitehall is so important. And they did just that. We saw three blue outlines flying towards the white corner right there. Fragger picking up two kills again. Does this man ever stop? 92, make it 93 to 26 right now. Snipe Drone and the boys, they're about to lose this game number one. Snipe Drone has the scatter shot. They need to make something happen. The basement is going to be huge here. Cristola should be taken down by Snipe Drone. Needs to win this battle. Oh, Cristola no. stays alive though and baits out Snipe Drone. Look at the disrespect coming in from Cristola as he wins that battle. But in the meantime, Nest has been lost here by Sorin. So as we always say, never shoot buddies before the series is over because I mean, they can definitely come back to bite you. But Cristola moving towards that railgun, he's definitely feeling confident. He is and camouflage comes up at around 45. Not sure on the exact timing and I'm not sure either team knows that either. So I believe it was Fraga with the last camouflage and Oof. Riots hit him with the most beautiful one tap with the scatter shot last time round. So if I had to guess, it's going to be soaring knowing the timing and they already have both power weapons in play on their side. SLG with the scatter shot, Cristola on our screens, looking over that camouflage. He wants to get a kill before he goes for this. He knows Snipe Drone is there too, so he's just going to wait for his teammate to come around and then maybe swing back around for that camouflage. But don't worry, the game is over. The game is indeed over and Soaring continue their march here in the third week of the 2Ks. They win game number one against Vexed Ebuyer. Again, we have to say an upset, but that was just convincing Halo from the guys on the sword. Yeah, very, very well played. Fundamental Halo, like I said, from the lads on soaring. I mean, no one really standing out. Cristola had a really great game. 22 kills he's contributing towards, but everyone stepping up in the kill department. Very even across the board here from soaring. Two players not standing out. Just seven kills apiece from Snipe Drone and Lunny. We said individual performances from Lunny would help them secure wins in this 2k and right now in the grand finals they are one nil down with a poor performance from both Lunny and snipe drone in that game one seems to be a mix of like in terms of like how a claim things so you've got soaring don't go and are playing really well and they controlled the map the whole time but you've got fixed make some huge mistakes like i think it's their priorities they need to get right so they need to at least clean up white hole clean up white corner clean up engine two make sure it's all clear before you actually go for that br base and go for these kills beforehand before getting these points but it's some reason they're just making too many assumptions that no one's around them and no one's actually spawn killing them. but you've got to remember this team took out infused who are almost as strong as them i'd say on this big strongholds game but you can see from the comment from Cristola and snakey and the boys now it seems like it's going to be so hard to fight against it's such a strong squad yeah momentum really is the uh, the key word here we've seen how good these french players can be when they get that momentum behind them and now we're moving into the game two of the series and remember it's just a best of five so we're not a best of seven anymore it's all about just winning those three games and we're moving into coliseum slayer gentlemen which we've already seen them win yes we've seen them play very well on coliseum in the past coliseum flag it was they took off of team infused and last time we saw Cristola play Rocket side on this map. I, I bigged him up as being one of those players who constantly gets Rocket control on this map, right? 
unfortunately, when they played against Infuse, he played very passive. So I actually want to start this game number two off with Crisola, see if he still plays as passive as he did against Team Infuse. And if he does, whether or not it works out, whether that was a design play, maybe a counter strap against Team Infused, or whether or not that might be something that he's trying to work into his own game. And so, I mean, we'll see in this game number two off the start, but if he plays pass, I, I prefer Cristolo just going up there and, you know, taking the take fight. Take the fight. Me. Exactly. Yeah. Take the fight, grab the rockets, and start pushing the pace early. Yeah, yeah. ride the momentum. I mean, we've seen Ride the, the wave, brother. Ride the wave, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Cristolo, show them the way. But anyway, any thoughts on this one, Lethal? Who needs to stand out in this one? Especially Lani after that last game, because we got a moment, but if Sorin take this game, games three and four are really strong for Sorin's game types. We saw how how much they destroyed the Maestro squad at most two, winning the Phantom CTF in such a quick margin. So we've got to make sure if Sorin win this game, it could be all but over over these next two. Well, let's see what Cristola does. Look like he is going to play this one a little bit passively as well, but actually, no. Looks like he could be mixing it up, but he's going to be met by a grenade from Lunny and forced down, so he doesn't get the chance here. Lunny's being aggressive, can't finish the kill though. Finally does, and once again, Cristola gets taken down. Lunny picks up those rockets early on. Another kill for Lunny here, and this is exactly the start that he needed. Yeah, terrible, terrible start. Strat, honestly, from Soaring. They tried that against Infused as well, with Snakey trying to push over to the oh. enemy team's maze. Did not work out that time round. Riot's again is loving his ground pounds lately. We'll take down SLG, but yeah, they need to work on their starts on Coliseum. Certainly doesn't seem to be working out at the moment. Snakey flying to the enemy team's maze is good if you keep him alive, but because of Snakey doing that, Cristola has to worry about him. He has to keep him alive, you know? And to make the whole play happen, you sacrifice a lot of presence on that Rockets on the rocket side of the map, as we saw Lunny was able to just soar over, absolutely no contestion, and now look, 8 to 1, 9 to 1, Quadios with a sniper, still rockets in the hands of Riots, by the way, so, yeah, this is an ugly, ugly game too, so far for Soaring, they need to slow down and regroup. 10 to 1, not the way you want to start with things, but a kill like that from Snakey can potentially spark something into life, Ooh. especially a double kill. Going to be another player challenging him. Snakey picks up three, and that is the way to turn things around if you are on Saurian right now. Big plays from Snakey, single-handedly taking back snipe control, and that was a fresh four dead there for the guys on Vex. Yeah, now Snakey and the boys can control Sniper Tower as they have against teams previously. I mean, we saw when they played Maestro earlier on, the snipe control for them was just so dominant, and this man is a player that you have to worry about if he's at the sniper tower, because fair enough, Rocket's coming up very soon, but this man's shot is just <laughs> on fire. I mean, there's I just love watching his POV. He just seems to be so confident in every single engagement he takes, and if he's not confident, guess what? He's going to back down. And he's such a smart player. And I was going to say, another thing to point out is his use of geometry on the map. He's always in a position where he can back down from those battles. You won't see him overextending too much into the open where he can't potentially use that thrust just to duck back behind cover. His positioning has been, again, exemplary, and he's really added so much to this team. But let's see what Chris Dola can do. Again, the man who doesn't challenge for rockets at the start. Let's see if he can <laughs> look to uh, maybe do something else on the map as well at the moment. He's going to be taken down as well, but 17 to 12. Vexed are controlling the pace of the game at the moment, and Quadios, I like this play. Bottom mid can be such a good way of creating distraction to break that snipe side tower. We should see, it's only a six point lead at the moment, make it a seven point lead. We should see at least a nine point lead with these two rockets, excuse me, one rocket from Quadios. We should see some guaranteed kills. There's the eight point lead, there's the nine point lead. Should be a 10 point lead here as well, and there it is. Two kills from Quadios, there's the 10 point lead. Sniper coming up soon. You see the two blue outlines left alive on the map are over away from the sniper, so that's gonna be a sniper in the hands of Vex as well. Well played from them, and Snipe Drone now has the new sniper. This is basically a replica of the Sorin versus Maestro game, where Sorin oh. has smart tower control for the whole time, and then as soon as they lose it, they get the power weapon control and then take it back straight afterwards. Basically, Vex have done the exact same thing, and it looks like now, instead of holding back Snipe Tower, Snipe Drone knows exactly just to wait back and get those Snipe kills from Red Open, just to try and somehow get the Snipe Tower back from Sorin. Snipe Drone rotating across top cap. Uh, sorry, across the top rocket bridge here. No one peeking after Cristola did call out that he got sniped from the elbow, but by doing this rotation here, he could catch a player off oh, that wall. wall. Again, that's why people punch the walls. 
<laughs> Not a sniper shot. So Sniper Drone does hit a second one though. Hits the body on Snakey. That's a double kill here. The triple kill was behind him, but decided to not give up any deaths here. Sniper Drone rotating away again, and little plays like that. Yes, you might go for a flashy triple kill there, but I bet you're gonna get a trade. Oh boy! Wow. And then you can turn around and use the rest of the ammo to do that. Sniper Drone lands the no scope, and look at this score. Nine kills the difference now, and Vex are just starting to run away with this one. Sniper Drone still has the sniper too, so he can repeak re that if he wanted to. Rockets are up right now. Frag of those shots are too good from him. He has the sniper that Snipe Drone just dropped, and when he knows that as well, you see on the player outlines him playing a little bit more passive. Wonder where these rockets are right now. Looks like Vex, they're playing super slow on them, and Quadios is going to pick those up. Only has a bolt shot to play with, though, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. He has to get in rocket range, otherwise, he's going to be. Uh, in uh, an interesting position. Yeah, never doubt that bolt shot. You can get things done with it. Now he's going to be pushing towards SLG. Uses those rockets, as you say, Harry, listening to your advice, pushing into a position where he can use those most effectively and clearing out that player from the cave is going to allow Vex to once again just establish snipe control. And this position here on top pyramid is just such a difficult position to take a player out of when they're up there. Such a difficult angle to hit. And with Lunny picking up sticks, Quadios with still another rocket in the chamber. I mean, it's just 11 kills now. We could be seeing a stake. Um, I think we almost certainly will. I mean, right, uh, excuse me, Quadios still has a rocket to work with. They're up by 17. Don't take a long-range rocket right here. There you go. That's a guaranteed kill. SLG will go down. <laughs> this is a 20-point lead here on Coliseum. Perfect Eat. in the kill feed. Looks like Soaring, they are nowhere near Vex level in this game. This is this is an insane run here from Vex. We haven't seen any of them die in quite some time. Yeah, Soaring's coordination just gone down the toilet straight away. Now. You don't see any of them going bottom mid, flanking around grass or anything like that. You don't see anyone getting around to their fountain. They're not doing any proper flanks. They're just going head to head. And we've got members with Sniper. Tower, you're always going to have a height disadvantage and they can always flank around the uh, the pitch straight and forth. So right now, they need to make some kind of play around the open side. But it looks like right now, it's like you said before, could be a steak dinner this way. Three kills to avoid the steak dinner here. That's what you got to think of. SLG has a sniper rifle. Riots baits him out beautifully there with a the clamber. In, right, picks that one back up again. 49 to 29. Who's going to win? Is it going to be Vex? Oh, they managed to. Is that avoid mistake when you get the third kills? Or are you going to. Uh, uh, yeah, steak dinner coming in here <laughs> for Vex e by in that second game. 50 to 30 is the final score. Answering back after Sorin's performance in the first one. And that was just dominance from start to finish. We have to be honest about that one. Again. Vex D buyer looking like our number one number one squad. Yeah, very, very great way to get back into the series. Very great, is that a good use of words? Well good. Well good. good English. Looking for. Very good English Proper nice. for me right there. Let's check out the damage dealt. It was actually Riot's most in the game, despite not being top of the scoreboard in kills. So really good game from Riots and just all round really from Vex D buyer. They were so polished on that game mode and it all started from the start of the game. Lunny playing aggressive up there on Rockets uh, and Cristola again, if he plays a bit more of a contact play like he, he has in the past, takes down Lunny and grabs the Rockets. Maybe we see a completely different game. I mean, look, from the start, from the get-go, it was 11 to four at one point in this game. And early on, that's a really tough lead to come back from. And you're going into this game number three now, fair enough, all tied up in the series. But after losing that game by a massive margin, that is not going to fill you with confidence whatsoever. Absolutely. And I like about Riots is the father. I like how he changes play style because normally he has the least damage on their team, normally because he's the one pushing in, trying to do the entry frag. But he was playing a lot more support play in terms of actually holding the snipe side, letting the other three fork in and just trying to at least get some flanks around, trying to get some kills, trying to make it go back and forth. But you can see from there, right, it's, it's changed a little bit. So it's nice to see a bit of difference in him. It's nothing like a good fork on a Sunday night. <sighs> Love it, have have a it. Anyway, <laughs> moving into game at number three. This time we're moving over to Fathom. We saw quite a lot of this last week, gentlemen. Um, but we did see Vexed... Uh, take it to, I believe it was the third replay, Vex against Infuse, and notably one of Infuse's weakest game types in the past. We've seen what this Soaring squad can do in their previous series against Infuse, where they absolutely, well, I mean, it was over before we knew it, it. and then, I mean, what have you got to say about it? What, how do you feel this one's going to go? Because I genuinely feel like Soaring could find themselves in a lead two to one. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, they could. It was Maestro they took it off within under four minutes, our first game of the stream. So did they? I don't think they played against... No, they didn't play against Maestro. Like, no. you, you so it, it was against Maestro that they won that game. But, but Maestro in the past have been good on this game type too. So if Soren can kind of replicate that performance and Fragger can just keep doing Fragger things, just keep I being Fragger, think man. they're going to be just fine, you know, uh, and they could definitely win this game. But at this moment in time, the momentum is in the hands of Vex after winning that Coliseum Slayer very handedly. But Soaring have the confidence knowing they can win this game type. Like, it's it's a tough one to call in, in game number three. Well, there's nothing else to do but to get into this game. Capture the flag. On Fathom going to be the next game. Three caps to win. Camo, Railgun. Use them well. Use them responsibly. Get those flags back to your base. And whoever wins this one will find themselves in a series lead. They are tied up at one to one. The third game of the series. Best of five, of course. Tweet the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get as many eyes on this grand final as we can as we will have a different winner of the 2K from when we had last week. Fragger, the man who has impressed and arguably the MVP so far of this particular tournament. We're going to start this one off with it. Poor start, really, from Soaring, honestly. I mean, Cristola oh, grabbed the, the camouflage first. He was burned off immediately. SLG grabbed the railgun first. Guess what? He was burned off immediately as well. So both the players playing for the, the power plays on the map go down. SLG does redeem his railgun. So. All the time we've been watching Fragger, those things have happened on the map. So no camouflage in play at the start of this game, but Railgun still in the hands of SLG. And you can see Vex's response to that is just being pinned back in the base and playing super passive until you find out exactly where he's playing. Absolutely, yeah. With Vex, they made sure they get as much info as possible and have that crossfire going until they know that something's happening. And as soon as they knew that and they knew exactly what's going on in the map in terms of where Soarin are and how, what they're holding, they instantly got those two kills. And as you can see, Lunny is going straight out to their courtyard. Recycles that railgun. A couple of shots left with it. Does take down SLG, who just was coming off the back of a double kill now. But that is going to be three dead. So an easy return here. And that flag is going to go back to the base. Cristola, once again, this seems like a little bit of a cursed railgun at the moment. But he does have it on his side of the map at the moment. So should be able to use this one pretty comfortably. Gets the jump on Riots. Cleans that one up with a headshot. Two players going to be pushing the silo here. He's trying his best to get in a position to help out his teammate. But Quadios. And Lani doing a good job there. Needs to hit the shot, but no, the wall gets in the way again. The dreaded wall. Causing so many problems in this series. Blooming walls, man. The geometry is just so hard to remember where all those walls are on the map. But both flags being run right now. SLG was running the vexed flag. He just went down. But look at this sneaky play from Cristolo. We'll get a trade off on the flag player. But because of how far advanced that flag is, no return is going to come in. Fragger kept the flag alive on the soaring side. So here we go. The old Fathom Sale, mate. I have to say. Camouflage coming up here too, Mark. I have to say that. I think that's a bad play from Cristola. There was no way he should have got that trade. I think Snipe Drone's outplayed him there. I think if Snipe Drone carrying the flag, not looking in that direction, Cristola has the jump on him there. Why is he going for the beatdown? There's no other player around who could have potentially traded that kill out. If Cristola takes his time there, puts the shots down, then he can, he can pick up that kill and potentially get a return. Big kill in the kill feed there from Fragger. He just took down Snipe Drone, who just picked up the new camouflage. So for the second time in a row, no camouflage in play here on Fathom. Both flags still at the enemy team's base. And the only power player on the map right now is Cristolo with this Railgun. But like you said earlier, Mark, no one really using this Railgun. Seems oh, this a little bit read. cursed. He can probably grab this read. That silo spawns a bit of a shame. But with SLG there too, yeah, this is a read right here. And just to get that return, is the flag going to go in though? That's the question. Is Traded anyone in reach. position? Three comes in from both sides now. This is the second beatdown. Can he finish the kill? No, Quadios wins that one against Cristola, and that's going to turn the railgun over once again. It looks like Lunny is in a position as well to try and get a flag pull. So if they can pick up the appropriate slays here, this could be an opportunity at a run of that flag. However, the guys on Sorin did seem to do a pretty good job, but Lunny, if he can get touched on this flag and just get around this corner, this could be an opportunity that's still in a position where Vex, if they pick up the appropriate slays, could get another run of this. Yeah, it's a shame. I mean, there was only one player alive, and that was Cristola for Sorin. So you've got to say, Vex, in that particular scenario, knowing those flags, you really should be running a flag and scoring it. But in the end, it's Sorin with a return. SLG is running a flag. I like this flag run over to elbow right here look at the red outlines all on the silo side of the map so fragger knowing that just needs to look at this side of the map right here all he needs to do is just take care of this area but look at the players overextending through their front courtyard right there from vex very smart play from them and it's paying dividends right now as the flag currently in front of the soaring base and with five seconds till railgun lot of resources are going to be split right here. Do you go for the return or do you go for that power weapon? In the end, the flag is in the base. Let's see what Riots can do to try and get this return. 
This is what I kind of meant by communication as well. It's the fact that Fragger, who is looking in a completely wrong position they scored. at all, and he could have at least gone in, but as they scored it already, it just makes it just it's just so strange how when Fragger's looking at the wrong spawns and actually letting them get away with it, and actually get up to their side, they still manage to score after that scenario. So. Sorin take the lead in this one. Camo here going to be chased down hard. Can he get away with that camo? He can indeed. That's a huge play there because that's going to allow Riots to get away with this camouflage. They're down by one at the moment. Riots using that jump up. Back to top mid to get some positional advantage over this Sorin squad. Comes back down. Let's get hit by a grenade though. So he's not going to be too effective. We see teammates the other side of the map as well trying to get a flag pull out. Riot's now going to have some shots down on this player top middle. Can he finish this kill? Yes, he can. Cristola taken down. So I think it'll be one down though. So Riot's set up top middle with this camo. There is an opportunity, but look at this. The counter pull now coming in. Riot's is going to be forced to make a play. Yeah, Quadios does have the flag back at his own base. I'm pretty sure he did have Railgun. This return is going to come in from Riot's. That's a huge return. Snipe drone, I believe, is back with the flag. No, in fact, I think someone must have gotten the re from Soaring when I didn't realize. Wow, that's, that's insane. I thought for sure Quadios had the flag back at his own base. So again, they trade the Rees. Snakey now with the Railgun. 40 seconds until the next one comes up. So you're looking at Snakey to try and make a play here for Soaring with that particular weapon. But I mean, I don't know how vexed again. Don't score that flag. Soaring coming up clutch in this game number three of this grand finals. Snipe drone now pushing. Snipe drone. Snipe duck. I've just literally caught, say, the snipe, the same thing. caught the snipe <laughs> drone disease from you. It's hard to say. Snipe drone. Snipe drone. On the porch here, he's going to be taken down he's by SOG. Don't Thank have to worry God. about yeah, it. Don't worry about it. Get rid of him for eight <laughs> seconds or so. That doesn't matter. Uh, snaky. That's much easier to say. So snaky, snaky, snaky. There we go. Anyway, top middle control is going to be the name of the game here for Snaky. Does know that there, there is a player currently patrolling top middle. Using that light rifle. That light rifle, which of course can be so devastating, especially for just shaving off players' shields very, very quickly. Lunny now going to be jumping to top middle with that railgun. Now the push is going to be coming on. Looks like Cristola's trying to flank behind Lunny here, but Lunny doing a good job to stay alive. Looking to pick up another kill here. Picks up a kill on SOG. Teammate on the elbow as well. I have to still manage to get this kill here. Somehow Cristola stays alive, but Lunny doing wow. great work here just to clean those kills out. And not only that, keeping his life and managing to keep that railgun in his hands. A shame here for Vex that there isn't a player in position in the enemy team's base, but guess what? It doesn't matter because all they were playing for right there was the camouflage. And guess who's got it? It's a snipe drone. So fantastic play from them, slaying out of their own base and just not being overzealous here on the map. You don't need to push for a flat capture when you know the camouflage is coming up any moment. If I'm snipe drone, I try and get this flag to a teammate right here, honestly, and try and flank around with camo. It would be a waste to throw this camouflage away on a flag run and that's exactly what he's going to do right here try and get his shields back do as much damage before he goes down but while we're talking quadros is scoring the flag nah, that's fantastic play by snipe drone normally you are absolutely right when you've got camo and you've got the flag normally you should only get it so far but the best thing is to have a it was only three dead at the time so you can easily take it through and hopefully get someone else to pick up from Koya, which is exactly what happened but apart from that it was a good play by them and now all we need to do is try and push him back get that crossfire going and hopefully get that top mid control Audio's here, sat in the gym with that tack mag in hand. Just position himself up on that wall there. So it's a nice little play. If anyone walks around that corner and you, you time that jump, you're always going to get that beat down, get the jump on your opponent. Now it looks like he's trying to make sure that he can clear out his side of the map. Now making the push. We see players top mid here from Sorin. They take down to no shields. That tack mag can't quite finish off that kill. That player does get a light away with his life as well. Hit by a grenade here, Cordios. He's caught, kind of caught in the middle of nowhere. Trying to clean up some kills, but actually going to be taken down, but finally does get the trade, which will stop that pull momentarily, which came in from the Soaring squad. We're going to see Snipe Drone now. Snipe Drone. I can't say it. I give up. Snipe, take over. Snipe Drone. I give up. Snipe Drone. Snipe Drone. Snipe Drone. Snipe Drone. There you go. Now you know how to say it. Uh, <laughs> Railgun just came up. That kill from Quadios Snipe we saw. Snipe Drone. Snipe Drone. See, got there you go. I'm it. proud right, of you. The, the kill we saw Quadios get, just before he went down was actually so vital because if he doesn't get that trade, that flag gets through to soaring side of bottom middle into their courtyard and that's almost guaranteed to be a capture for them. So very important trade quadio has got right there. Snipe Drone here with the Railgun. Haven't really seen too much Railgun usage. We saw Lunny pick up a kill with it earlier on, but now with a camouflage, let's see if this can be more of a factor. And don't forget, coming into the Halo WC season this time around, the Railgun has been nerfed a little bit. The, the, the changes in the charge time really makes it a lot more difficult to use and it's way more balanced for, for the pros to use it. Everyone in matchmaking seems to hate it now, but I tell you what, it's, it's 
become so much more balanced in pro games. We don't see a railgun take over the game as we have in the past. No, absolutely not. And as Riots does cap this second flag, you saw exactly what Snark Jones did there. He knew that there's going to be a couple of people in the engine, and there's going to be someone on an elbow. Instead of just rushing in like most teams normally do, who has been patient, took up one with a rail, injured another one with a rail, and then helped take out the guy on elbows. So Snark Jones did a lot of work for these first two caps. So great plays by him so far. Fraga managed to bait two uh, railgun shots there out of snipe drone. Just bobbing and weaving, waiting for that charge to go up and then thrusting away. So little plays like that can make a difference. We saw the first time there, as we mentioned, the railgun not been too effective. Snipe drone did put it to use and it did result in a flag cap for Vex. They find themselves up two to one in the game. Snakey to be taken down as we see. Moving over to Riots now. Trying to sneak behind enemy lines again, but the light rifle is going to take him down to no shields. It's going to be a battle. Two players here. Puts more shots down on that player. Wow. Oh, beautiful shots from Riots. Taking Snakey out. Cristalo does trade that one out, however. So now we're back to a somewhat of a reset. We see one player overextending there for Vexed. And it seems to be kind of a battle of the overextensions at the moment. It seems like initially both teams playing this one fundamentally pretty solidly. Look at that top middle control. Maybe having one player look to overextend off the respawn and sneak into that base for a flag pull. But now Lunny has the railgun. Can he put it to use in the same way that Snipe Drone? So only two minutes left in this game. Soaring, they need a camouflage on the board. Don't forget, Vexed, last two camouflages have gone in their favor. So Soaring with no timing on the camouflage are going to have a hell of a time getting back into this game. You've got to say, with only a minute 30, barring an insanely good round of slays from them, the only route back into the game is grabbing this camouflage. So you see top middle trying to be contested. Lunny needs to be burned right here from soaring. Make sure you kill this camouflage player on no shields. Don't let him do that. Oh, oh, you cannot Lunny let that happen. Lunny back Lunny. down as well. Keeps his life. How do you let that happen? That's, yeah, that's difficult to watch. I fully expected Lunny to drop off the top middle there, but he doesn't. He now drops off and picks up the back smack on a sliding SLG. Lands a grenade here, should be able to pick this kill up pretty comfortably as well. Chases this one down. Takes a fragger out. It looks like a flagpole has come in as well from a teammate. Actually going to be a player on Soren who's actually going for that flagpole. And there it is, Lunny using that camouflage effectively. Picks up the double kill, a killing spree for Lunny. As well as that, the return comes in. One more player to take out here for Vex. This could be the game going in if they can get this return. They do get the return, I believe. Is anyone there to actually capture this flag, though? Return. Is in front of the base? Sorry. Not coming just yet, but look at that series of plays that happened, all because you don't kill. Oh, my lord. Snakey actually won that fight and gets the return. So no third flag of the game. It's not going to be a big deal, though, for Vex, because they're still only 10 seconds away from winning the damn thing. But it's a good point. If you kill Lunny <laughs> top middle point. and he had camouflage, none of that. None of that series of events happen. I mean, Lenny doesn't get to go around the backside and, and try and slap the back of SLG while he's running flag. And if that doesn't happen, then SLG maybe gets through and ties up the game. Maybe we see a fathom overtime. So many what ifs there for soaring, but such a shame they, they weren't able to kill Lunny at the end of the game. Yeah, that is going to be the game going into Vex. And that's a big game for them, I believe. Such a, a tightly contested game type fathom cap to the flag. And Squeezing that one out is always a good thing as we move into the next game. It's actually going to be Vex 2-1 to one up in the series now. Just one game away. Just one game away. I like the use of squeezing out. Thank you. <laughs> they definitely squashed that game. 12-minute fathom, 2-1, they win it. And what a game from Lunny, by the way. 29-18. to 18. Big performance from him. That's a plus 11 spread. Only one behind the most assists in the game as well. 16 assists from Riots and three perfects from him too. But that was a really well played game there from Vex. And there's not really much else to say. It's just it, the camouflages towards the end of the game really got away from Soaring. We, we saw Cristola at the start of the game do his traditional fly and burn the camouflage. But after that, if, you, if you're going to make that play at the start of the game, you have to make sure, you know, now that you know the timing on the second one, you at least get that one. From then on, it was pretty much all Vexed. Camouflage is just getting away from them. Railguns certainly seem to be in the hands of Vex for most of the game as well. And the camouflage plays really in the end made the difference. Absolutely. And with Snipe Drone versus two of those caps taking it bottom mid and also completely taking out all three members from engine and elbow. It's some really good kills, really good plays by Snipe Drone. But literally towards the end of the last two or three minutes, it was literally the Lunny show. You know, Mark, you were talking about before how literally Lunny needs to improve his individual performance. Not anyone else saying that, but just him alone saying that he needs to step up his own game. Even though 
to us. We think he's doing quite well already, but he wants to get to that next tier, just break out of his shell a little bit more. But that was a great example of him doing that, that game. Yeah, very good example of it. When Lunny plays well, Vexed seem to win. And that is exactly what they did in that game number three. But game number four, gentlemen, we are moving over to Strongholds on Eden. And I mean, we'll probably go to a game five now. Probably game five. Game five. <laughs> probably game five. Be because, but because I can tell you now, Vex have won anyway, because game five is Regret Slayer. That's true. So there you go. Don't worry about it, guys. Turn the stream off. We've, we've we, sorted it out. We're done It's sorted. It's sorted. <laughs> anyway, no. Strongholds on Eden is going to be the next game. As you can probably guess from the guys on the desk, we're going to favorite the guys on Sora for this one this just block. because of the French magic that happens on Eden Strongholds. But we have been wrong before, so this could well go the other way. Who knows? We're going we're gonna to find out. So what are your thoughts on this one? Do you think it's going to go that way? Or do you think... What, what, let's, let's answer it a different way. Let's have a think about this. Okay. How do Vex take this game type off of Sori? Good question. Don't know the answer. Because Lethal? every single time... <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'll just go home, shall I? Yeah. Every single time we see French players play this map, SLG, Fragger, whoever it is, Solo in the past, has, has just played so well on camouflage, like almost every single time, rocket side of the map, overshield, they just seem to be everywhere at once. And then as soon as they get that triple cap once, all they do is just suffocate you. They predict where you're going to spawn. They manipulate spawn so well. And then as soon as they find out where you're spawning, it's like, hey, you spawn in here? Guess what? You're dead. <laughs> oh, you're spawning over there now? You're dead over there too. Oh, over there? You get the gist. Like, they just are so good at spawn manipulation, it's scary on this game type. But the only problem is, with this Vex squad as well, they seem to be getting that slaying power a lot more compared to Sword. And the problem is, we thought they would take that game three because how well Sorin played against Maestro. We just thought, you know what, it's just going to be another game. You know, by game four, it should be all said and done. But it's just surprising how Sorin has now completely changed the momentum and it's more in the swing of Vexed. Even though Vexed are playing a lot slower and a lot more patient, but it seems like their decision making seems to be more on par compared to Sorin's at the moment. Well, we're about to get into this next game. Make sure you get your comments into us as well because we'll be joining Lottie after the grand final. Use the hashtag HaloWC. Let us know your predictions for this. Let us know any more questions you might have. Move Moving into week four, but the game is underway. It's going to be Strongholds on Eden. I'm looking forward to this one, gentlemen, and I'm just going to call it right now. We're going to see a game five, baby. Woo, game five fight. Yay. <laughs> that was the worst time <laughs> of my life. I'm going to get this one hype right. On, Let's start this one off with him. The man has had a pretty impressive series so far, and it's going to be Cristola who manages to steal the overshield away at the start of this. And this is a nightmare start. I mean, Frag has already picked up two. Cristola has the overshield in his hands. I'm not sure where the camouflage went, considering the impressive amount of tower control from Vex right now. I'm guessing they probably have it in the hands of Snipe going, if I had to guess, but rockets and overshield, a little bit of overshield left in the hands of Cristola. In fact, that's all gone now, so just the rockets on the hands of Soaring. A couple of weirdly missed shots right there from Fragger. Very uncharacteristic from him, but Snakey still with these rockets means Blue Bend won't be under any threat right now. Snakey has the rockets in his hands. Could be patrolling this blue band. They're trying to get a contest on that one, but it looks like the guys on Vex will be able to turn that one over. But surprise, surprise, it's actually Vex to a scoring, but only momentarily because Fragger has once again positioned not only himself, but that grenade perfectly and manages to take that player out and trade strongholds. But Vex are going to be scoring. They have the Red Nest and the Blue Bend at the moment, so it's all up to the guys on Soaring to make a play on these strongholds. Yeah, another minute until that next round of power-ups. Stop throwing stuff at me, Mark. <laughs> Listen, okay? You can't see it because, you know, we're commentating the 2K finals right now, a grand finals, might I add, in game number four. But Mark's throwing napkins at me. Stop. So you can't okay? see it? No stop, evidence. Stop, stop, no being, evidence. stop being a child. <laughs> There's things happening on the map right here. And Vex actually are in the lead right now. They're up 11. 11 to 10. At the moment, we're soaring or scoring. That's hard to say. Try saying that five times fast. Soaring and scoring, soaring and scoring. I can't even say tonight, drone, so I'm not, <laughs> not even going to attempt that one. But About 20 seconds until the next rocket launcher comes up and then overshield and camouflage just afterwards. These round of slays here from Vex are very, very big. Depending on what soaring do, coming off this four down respawn, it could be Vex chunking a big amount of time here on this map. Luckily, they get a turbine spawn, which is very fortunate for them considering that the rockets comes up in five seconds time and, and there it is, it's up on the map. But again, three down, SLG last Ooh. alive. He is in position for the overshield, but rockets will be in the hands of Vex, no doubt. And it's a shame as well, because Sauron is holding outside the entire time, but that was a big kill by SLG. And now this is make sure it gets back to red, try and hide away for as much as he can, and at least try and push around outside. But it looks like with Sauron right now, he is trying to help SLG as much as he can, but he's doing a good place so far, he's making sure he is trying to help him with that bridge control, but it looks like right now he needs to try and stay alive 
and get ready to take back blue once uh, the Vague Squad actually push around blue. Yeah, I'm surprised his teammates actually left him here because they haven't finished off that cap on Catwalk. SLG going to be in a position here. I'd like to see Cristola go for this cap. Just needs to position himself maybe up on this wall on the right. Finish this cap, then take on this battle with riots, but actually backs down and looks to relocate to this red nest. He's doing some damage. Lance a grenade on that red nest. Cristola trying to finish off the kill with Snipe Drone as well. Snipe Drone manages to stay alive. Should finish this kill. Does finish this kill using that camo effectively. Then it's going to be Vex who still have control. But look how tight this game is between these two, two teams, gentlemen. Quadios wins a battle 30 to 29. And now it's going to be the guys on Soaring who are scoring once again. Soaring are scoring. Quadios and the boys, they, are, they seem to be keeping up with Soaring so far. I mean. You can see they are scoring right now, but again, as soon as they start scoring, Soaring are like, yo, you know what? You have Red Nest now. That's our Red Nest now. Don't even worry about it. And it's, it's really tough to, to try and keep up with the fast-paced, high-octane gameplay of Soaring when they do just play this game type so fast. I mean, it's hard to keep up with them. In fact, right now, they're doing a good job, but I feel like this next round of power-ups coming up in around 20 seconds time is going to be key to the rest of the game. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think this is such a fast game type at the moment. Both teams recognizing, well, soaring, playing it so fast, and Vex recognizing they have to match that aggression if they want to get anything out of this particular game. And they're doing a pretty good job at the moment, but we are now seeing Soren taking the lead. This is a big kill on Quadios. They managed to get that kill as well, and there's no one else in position here for Vex to finish off that capture. So they're going to get a hold on the map. It's going to be Red Bend. It's going to be the catwalk in the hands of Soren as well. Riots picks up two kills. Quadios trades out Snakey. Quadios makes the fourth kill as well. So this should be an easy cap on that red nest here for the guys on Vex. So one of those kills from Riots was a betrayal, but it was very important that he got the kill on Cristola because Cristola was the man who picked up the overshield. So no overshield in play this time round. Looking for a camouflage player, it was Cristola last time round who grabbed that one. So. We'll see if the camouflage is in play. Can't see any players on the map with it just yet. But. And that's the main thing about Soren as well. That but they managed to hold bridge and managed to actually push over at the same time. So all they need to do now is hold these two points, try and pin them outside the mini cap because they know that they will try and flank around bombing, which they have done. But sadly, SLG did die in that moment. And looks like right now, Snyder will be trying to get that red nest back after flanking around from red. Oh, going to be taken my. down by Fragger. Fragger what? again with a huge play. <laughs> However, it doesn't... Man, had quite too much there because that red nest was already in control. It looks like Cristola's making the decision with his team to try and exchange that catwalk for this red nest. And again, for the first time here, we see a triple cap. But just like that, scoring once again turned around here. And it's going to be Soaring now who is scoring 57 to 49. And this game is just insane. These two teams are playing this so, so fast. Just every time we see a stronghold get captured, it gets answered back immediately. This battle at red nest has been going on for around two minutes. Looking forward to seeing the Michael Bay adaptation in cinema soon. <laughs> Three kills from Vex, though, means they are going to recap Red Nest to go in their favor. They're only down by around 15 points right here. So with that triple cap, they surely will close the gap on Soaring right now. Soaring, they can't fluctuate right here. They can't go into a state of fibrillation. They have to group up. They can't go down one by one like Snakey is right there. They need to group up, get over to that blue bend. But the problem is, when you get over there, Riots has the new rocket launcher, so you've got to worry about him. Yeah, I was going to say, that round of kills was so important for Vex. Not only the triple cap, but at the exact time that those power-ups are coming up as well. So they're going to have the opportunity to spawn those players in blue, in the tower. Riots is looking for another kill on Snakey here, but can't quite make it. But his teammate should finish this one up. It's Lunny who manages to pick that up. Not sure if that overshield was burnt or if anyone has managed to get control of it as yet. But on the other side of things, Soarin have the advantage now because they have a player with that camouflage. If this can be played well by Cristola, then they could have the opportunity to get another stronghold cap, but they need to act quickly because look at this score, 78 to 64. The triple cap has done the damage. Lani, if he gets that kill, oh, Lani does. That's an absolute dagger in the heart of soaring all the while. Cristola had that camouflage, Vex had a triple cap, and they are nowhere near blue bend right here. I think Chris is the only player in a position to contest that should Vex push for this triple cap again. And yeah, it's Vex pushing the pace. They are fighting over at Blue Bend right now. A trade does come in. 
in front of our faces here on Fragger's POV. But look, the triple cap again being pushed here from Vex. Snipe drone with two, snipe drone with three. Ooh, well, I'm good, capturing yeah. Blue Ben the whole time too. I'm saying that's GG. I'm saying Vex, they take this 2k. Yeah, it's a shame, I'm afraid. With those two at bottom red, Vex were literally pinning them. They weren't trying to kill him, just holding there long enough. So that gives the other team a chance to actually try and get a flank on him. But you can see that by the time they pushed out, it was just way too late. Too late indeed, but Vex are going to be feeling good because they managed to take the third European 2K here. That's their second 2K of the season as well. And they move closer towards solidifying that second place spot and that spot to Orlando, of course. The stats are on your screen. Anything jumping out to you, gentlemen? 16 and 8 with those 10 assists from Cordios, least captures on his team but he won't mind too much. Lunny with, again, a, a great performance. 17 and nine from him. We said individually, he feels he needs to step up. He will definitely feel like he stepped up in this particular series. 17 and nine in that game is, is a great stat line. On the other side, single digit kills for three of the members. Fragger, the superstar of the team, the only one really keeping up. And five and 17 from Snakey. He won the game five against Team Infused, but that is an ugly stat line. And when it comes to slaying ability as well, we don't really mention much about him, but with Rites as well, we know he's a really good objective player who likes to get in dirty and literally get the entry frags in any time he can. But it's nice to see Rites actually stepping up his game a lot. I suppose those two have been talking to each other a lot and just trying to improve each other to see if they can at least improve their game as a team as well as individuals. But you can see from here, literally all of these games, it's a shame they didn't play like this against Infused, but again, it might be a confidence thing. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree with you there. I think Sorin maybe just ran out of gas a little bit towards the end. Vex just built momentum continually through that and now once again we mention it Vex the second 2k cup they've won as well as all the PPs they've got in the week they are looking pretty good for that second spot for Orlando and we have to say at this point you know we've probably got at the moment our two best representatives going over there yeah and, and don't forget this is also for first seed going into Halo WC London right Infused are not guaranteed number one seed they get the spot over to Orlando thanks to their impressive performance last season but Vex I believe will be number one seed now after winning the first 2k this 2k and only dropping in the semi-finals last week so I'm pretty sure they will be first seed going into Halo WC London barring a, a miracle in the ne next couple of 2k's well let's uh, firstly make sure that you get your uh, your final tweets into the show as well use the hashtag Halo WC but let's break down the series very very quickly before we have a quick look at some of those tweets that have been coming in we love you guys thank you very much for uh for being involved today first game rig uh vex taken out <laughs> <laughs> well literally with this soaring squad when we saw the first game and they beat him quite badly in 140 situation I, th I genuinely thought that that could be the series like i thought the yeah. first game like momentum really could have been a big thing in this one but no, absolutely, because we did think straight off the bat that we saw him beating them so hard from the first game. We thought to ourselves, well, you know, but with the momentum they had from the previous two series, they've obviously carried it over and probably assumed that, you know, if we could beat Infused, then surely we can beat Vex, considering they've lost uh, only on one of the time, which was last week. But it was weird because they had such a good, strong start in this game type. We thought by the time it goes to the second game, it will just follow through and be a 3-0 or 3-1. But Vex completely proved us wrong with their patience and their strong ability to outslave him in most of his game types. That's very, very true. As you can see the replays from that game one. Cristola played very well in that game number one as well, but it was just the continual pressure they had. And I think they just out-rotated the guys on uh, on Vex as well, which is very rare to say, considering that they're such an impressive squad themselves. I think Vex in that game number one were very surprised from the individual performances that came out from the men on Soaring, right? I mean, how many individual plays did we see in that replay package coming in from the likes of Fragger and Cristola staying alive, teabagging, you know, shooting some bodies here and there. I think Vex were very surprised at, at what they found out of Soaring. Well, moving on to game number two, Coliseum Slayer. Vex managed to take that one and tie the series up at 50 to 30. What jumped out for you here for me? It was just all about the teamwork. Yeah, it was uh, just pure teamwork on Coliseum from Vex. I mean, we saw in the past when Soaring played this game type, they played it very, very well with sniper tower control it felt like vex were watching that game and were like you know what anything you could do we could do better again cristola a very slow start off off of the start playing for those rockets in the future want to see him play a little bit more aggressive more contact wise up there at top rockets and the first round of power weapons really sets the tone for the rest of the game on Coliseum. And as we saw, it was Vex with both Snipe and Rocket Control at the start of this one and it escalated into a lead and never really looked back from there. It's literally the exact same game with Soaring versus uh, the Maestro Scott because literally in that game, Soaring had Snipe Tower Control the whole time and when they lost it, power ups were coming up and literally they took him, took back control again. And with these two teams, it was literally the exact same situation 
but the other way around with Vexed. Very, very true. And then game number three, of course, we moved on to, and the series progressed even more. We saw Vexed scraping out a 2-1 victory there, and this was such an attritional battle between these two teams. It was... Two to one at the end of Fathom Capture the Flag, but it was just a constant. It was two heads piled against each other. Yeah, so many chances for both teams to win the game. I mean, we saw a fair few flag runs. We saw a flag standoff in there. But the, the moment that stood out for me in Fathom Capture the Flag is at the end of the game when Lunny was, was top middle with that camouflage.